All right. So again, photop.com. I have my three images already to go. So I'm going to go up to file, open, and look for those files. Um, depending on where you have them on your computer, will determine where it's at. Um, and I'm going to open each one. So you have to open. You can't, unfortunately, open them. Actually, you might be able to open both of them, all three of them. I'm going to open all three. But some of you only have one, and that's fine. So I'm going to hit open. I selected all of them, and you see how I now I have three different documents. Okay. So again, that grainy stuff that you see inside of on the paper is just the, the texture. I'm going to zoom in. I'm, I'm doing Command Plus or Control Plus on your Chromebooks. Okay. First off, I'm going to crop it. It's the first thing I'm going to do. So the crop tool right here. All right. Obviously, I don't want all of this. I just want the nice so solid white background and the image itself, the artwork. All right. So I'm going to click, drag. If I crop off a little bit of the painting, it's not a big deal, right? We want to get as much of the painting or the artwork in this case um, we can inside of our image, right? So I just clicked and dragged. Um, and then I can resize. I'm going to bring it a little closer. So when you're cropping or when you're zooming in, Okay, you want to get as much of your artwork in the frame as possible. Okay, and then I'm going to hit return. All right, I'm going to do that again for those of you that may have missed that. So Rosie, did you or anyone else, did you go file open and then select your images that you wanted? So I held the shift button. So I clicked on that one, held the shift button and then selected them and then hit open. Okay. All right. And now, now that we're here, remember we have the layers here and we have, this is the crop tool. So click on the crop tool from corner to another corner, and then you can resize or reshape it. Remember, this is only to cut off everything outside of this border that we have. Once you have it the way you want it, you hit return on your keyboard. So I'm going to hit return. Boom. All right. And now zoom in. Command plus. All right. Um, make sure, by the way, your screens should be as bright as possible. That way you have the true colors showing through. So if you're, you're, if you, I know you guys do this sometimes to uh, allow your battery to last longer. Um, so increase the batter, the brightness, and then if you need to plug in your Chromebook, you should. I'm going to do the same thing with my other pictures because after I crop them all, I'm going to see which one is A, the most in focus, and B, um, which one has the best lighting out of the three. Okay. Yes, Rosie. Again, crop this one. And then hit return. There we go. All right. The way you crop again, Lexi, hit the crop. This is the crop tool right here. And then you click where you want to start and drag like that. Yes, C. If you hit C on your keyboard, that is the shortcut. Yes, Elise, I am recording this. And Rosie, um, elaborate on what 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 did you take a picture with? Your Chromebook, your phone. All right, so now I have all three. So this is the first one. Okay. Um, hmm. That's odd, Rosie. 
maybe retake the picture. Maybe your, your phone might be saving it as a weird document. That could be why. All right, so as you're looking, you see how the lighting changes? This one has a tint of blue on it. This one, it's kind of like gray. And this one is probably the best in terms of accuracy. Okay, so I'm gonna go with this one. Remember, the little, the least amount of stuff you have to do your, to your photograph, the better. Because you wanna keep it as true as possible to the actual artwork itself, All right? So lighting wise, this is the best one. And in terms of focus, they all seem to be pretty well focused. Okay. Okay, so Rosie, just um, follow along. Um, and after this, I'll, um, we'll troubleshoot it together. Okay, so now we have this one, right? And we have layers. We're gonna add what's called adjustment layers for the lighting, for the colors, uh, for brightness, contrast, and what I also uh, use is levels. All right, so what we do is you're going to go over to layer. We want new adjustment layer. I always start with levels. So go, go up to the top, layer, new adjustment layer, and select levels. We're off the bat, this is typically the first one I use for any photo, whether I'm doing photograph of my artwork or photographs that I've taken. Okay, so levels. And you get this menu showing up. These are the levels of the different colors on your photograph. And at the ends, you have black and you have white. So the dark values or the dark areas and the really bright areas. And then you have this graph of the colors that are in your artwork. And so what I do, sometimes there's an auto level button. I try not to use that as much. I only think two things that I do. I take this black box and I move it as close to it as I can to where that line starts to go up. Okay. And you can kind of see what happens when you move it more, right? It makes everything darker the more you move it into the right. So I'm going to take this and move it to where that line starts to slope up. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing for the white box. Take it, click, drag it. And again, you can see what happens. It makes everything bright, right? And this is technically what filters do on your phones for like uh, your social media, but sometimes they get a little too carried away and go too overboard. So I'm gonna click it and drag it to where that line starts to go up, okay? All right, so that's, that's it on the levels. Notice how this layer, so when, when we're looking at layers here, it's above the picture. Perfect, Rosie. If I move dragging this layer below it, Notice how it takes it away. So make your picture will always should be at the bottom underneath anything we've added adjustment layers. And so you can see the difference between this. Now that we added the levels, turn it off and you should be able to tell the difference. It should be a little more crisp, your image, right? So I have a lot of color in my artwork, right? And so I wanna also make sure that those colors are true. They're slightly off, um, little bits of it. Um, in person, it's a little brighter, like or more saturated, the colors are. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is go over to layer again, adjustment. What we're gonna do next is do the brightness and contrast layer. So click on, again, go up to layers, new adjustment layer, click on brightness and contrast, okay? And again, you notice how you now have a new layer that says brightness slash contrast, right? And now you have two toggles. One is for the brightness and one is for the contrast. And again, if you kind of move these around, you'll see what happens. Again, it's messing with the light and dark areas, depending on the lighting you have. So if a lot of you guys took pictures right now, you're probably having to adjust a lot of this brightness and the levels because you might you probably took a picture where the lighting wasn't as great, okay? All right, and so now I'm gonna up it just a bit so you can see 
if I go too far, it makes everything too white, right? And blows out the colors that are there. So I'm just going to bring it up just a little bit. Manny, what's wrong? Just going to move it just a little bit. I'm going to go to 23. This number will depend on your picture. Manny, do you need me to uh, do something or show something again? Okay, no, no problem. Oh, do you guys remember? Go ahead, Manny. Oh, that's fine. Do you guys remember how to undo something? Yeah, Control Z is your, uh, your what should we call it? The uh, your hot keys, Control or Command. I'm I'm using Command because I want a Mac, right? Or you can just go Edit and step back backwards. Yeah. Dana to add. Remember, it's layer, new adjustment layer, and you click on brightness, contrast, okay? And I'm gonna do the same thing for the contrast. Now, if your picture was too bright, obviously you're gonna wanna bring it down. So this will determine on everyone's picture. So I'm gonna go to the 20s on my picture. Yours may be slightly different. And my contrast, it's kinda like you were just using your eyes and seeing what fits or looks the best. Not in terms of, again, where we want it to stick or stay true to the actual artwork. So we don't want to lie and make it look better or worse than it actually is. If anything, we want to enhance just a little bit so that all the little details are more visible in your painting or in your photograph. Okay. All right, so I think I'm good with 23 on the brightness and 11 on contrast. So not too, too bright and not huge contrast. Again, you can see what happens if I up it all the way, okay? So I'm gonna go, and again, zero is always like the level where you started off. Hey, Miss Superna. Um, wait, I thought we weren't gonna do it, Miss Superna. Wait, no, I thought, the email you sent me. Oh, oh okay. All right. Ah, got it. Sorry. Um, so, uh, no, we can do this because I'm recording. Yeah. So go for it. That's fine. Yeah, I can do it. Here, I'll make I'll make one. Sure, no problem. Okay. Uh, there's the breakout room. Yeah, no problem. And then I believe you wanted or she wanted to talk to Heaven. Heaven, go ahead and click on the link in the break uh, for the breakout room for Miss Superno. All right, did everyone add the levels in the brightness layers? Everyone good there? Okay. All right, and so now what we're going to add. Is the other one I do is let's do most likely saturation. Okay. Saturation. That's to bring up the colors. For me specifically, this image, we want saturation because we want these colors to show up a little bit more. So go again to layer, new adjustment, and click on hue and saturation. What does hue mean, by the way? You guys remember that def? Yes, thank you, Chris. Color, it's just a fancy word for saying color. Okay, so keep that in mind. All right, now you have all these toggles, right? So these are important. They're actually pretty important for my uh, painting because I have such a variety of colors, number one. Number two, these colors are super bright in person. 
uh, especially like these purples and these magentas. So I want those to show up and be more true. So again, you click and you drag or mess with the, the toggles, right? If, I, if you drag it all the way, it's taking all of the color out, out of it, okay? That's why it's turning into black and white now. So again, zero is just what it what you originally started with. And then I'm gonna up it just, I tend to stay within like the 10. Sometimes I go into the 20s, but rarely. I tend to stay between 10 and 20 in that range, right? Because again, we don't, we, we wanna just slightly enhance so it looks as close to the, uh, the thing in person, right? All right, so I'm gonna go to 10 on the saturation. Those, I mainly mess with the saturation one. Then I'll play around with the hue if I wanted to, but you see how it only really affects one color. So that's why I tend to leave that one on its own. And then the lightness, and it also does that, but we already fixed it with the brightness and the levels adjustment layer. So I'm gonna leave that to zero. And you can also obviously put the numbers in yourself if you wanted to, all right, manually. All right, pretty easy, right? All right, and so now we have the image, we have all of our, what are called adjustment layers, right? We've cropped it, it's nice and clean and easy to, to go. Um, remember, you can see how each layer kind of affects your picture overall. Um, if you if I turn on and off the hue and saturation one, you'll notice that it's just a slight difference, not a huge one. You you shouldn't be turning one off and it's like a completely new different image. It should still be uh, pretty similar, right? Again, we're kind of just bringing things out uh, that you would see in in person. And um, because then you can use, use this image for a digital portfolio, right? So I'm gonna assume that a lot of you have digital or uh, portfolios like, for example, any social media is technically your portfolio, right? In this case though, your, your, uh, your social media accounts are mainly more a portfolio of your life and whatever you are doing on a daily basis. Well, in this case, some people like to have, there's uh, a couple different accounts for social media, right? One that deals with their everyday life. One, if they're into like a specific hobby, they have that dedicated account for that hobby or whatnot, okay? Um, so, all right, saving this. Right now it's saved as, or it comes up as a PSD. That's a Photoshop document. We wanna save it as a regular picture document. So we're gonna go up to file and we're gonna go export, right? We're gonna export it as a JPEG. JPEG is just any photograph, right? Any picture that you take, either a camera, typically we'll save it as a JPEG, right? Unless you have a specific setting. So I'm gonna click on JPEG, and then it shows you a preview of the uh, zoomed in at 100%, right? And this is also telling you the quality. So look what happens to the quality when I decrease it. Should give me a preview. There it is. You see how it gets all grainy when you zoom in at 100%. So the less quality, the more uh, degraded the image will look. But if I increase that, I always save it at 100, the highest possible, right? This is a format. There's different types of formats. We're just going to stick to JPEG. And this is just giving you the, the width and the height in pixels. So if you want to see it in inches, the picture is five inches by seven inches. Right. So always put the quality to 100% and then you just save it. And then it's for me, it's saving in my downloading uh, folder. Right. And that's it. And then if, to see it, here it is as a JPEG. Right. That's it. Pretty easy and straightforward, right? 